So welcome to this um, biomechanics coach interview. So uh, we're going to be speaking to Fiona Jones today. Um, we're going to go through a little bit about her background. And so I'm going to start off by saying, Fiona, would you like to introduce Who are you? <laughs> Um, hello, so I'm a, a personal trainer, group exercise instructor, sports massage therapist and biomechanics coach, um, although, <laughs> um, although not currently personal training, um, just circumstances obviously, um, and then I've also spent about a decade assessing and tutoring all of those things that I just listed, so in, in the fitness industry pies with all my fingers. Yeah, I think there's a lot of that, isn't there? We're a bit, we're all a bit hybrid. So uh, I, I hear a lot of synergy with my background as well. You kind of put your finger in a few pies and massage and you go into <laughs> group X and a little bit of everything. But I think that's what makes it interesting, isn't it? It's, uh, it's different every day, right? Yeah, and I think clients need a little bit of all of those things. So if you have all of those things to offer them, you can, you can be a little bit more of the full package, which is... Um, yeah, better for business as well. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So talking about business then, uh, we are in February 2021 um, and we are sort of almost a year into this kind of lockdown uh, pandemic kind of um, era. How are you coping? How are you managing your business? Are you online? Or are you, what are you doing right it's now? It's a bit of a strange one. I've been out of the country almost four years and just returned a couple of days before the, the first lockdown, properly locked down. So I got about two appointments in and then everything was just closed up, uh, which was devastating. Um, just come back to the UK and was going to restart business. Um, but I spent most of the summer working for you, Rachel. <laughs> doing some admin support for biomechanics education and getting in touch with a lot of people that had inquired about wanting to book onto the courses and following up and just getting to know people um, and their circumstances and help plan like where they wanted to go get booked on the courses so there was a lot of that um, I spent most of it being uncomfortably pregnant doing lots of <laughs> doing lots of exercise to help um, help with that and then uh, we were both teaching through the Her Spirit app which was a online app for women who originally triathletes but they opened it up to everybody over the summer so that was really fun I was doing some some core stuff um, and just trying to stay occupied trying not to think about the financial implications just um, stay in touch with because I was one of those people that really slipped through the net financially coming back to the UK having not submitted a tax return for a couple of years there wasn't any help on offer nothing for maternity nothing for self-employment so it was very much uh squeaky time. Um, <laughs> really you know, just like, gonna stay in touch with the industry and get back into it as as best as possible but I didn't I didn't um I didn't go for the online training option because I felt like being pregnant and so close to having a little one I didn't want to invest in somebody's long-term fitness journey and then have to just back out of it so I just thought I would stick with the more clinical side of things but what a great time to have a baby when you know you can be at home and I, I don't know there's a couple of ways of looking at it isn't it but clearly you're resilient uh in terms of as you say, you came back and I remember speaking to you and you literally, you know, your situation was such, you just didn't get, you didn't get anything. Um, so how do you think, like if you were sort of looking into the future, what do you think, if anything, this is gonna do for our industry? Do you think it's gonna change it forever? Or is it gonna go back to where it was? What do you think the future of our industry is now? I'm speaking to personal trainers nearly every day when I call the people that have inquired about getting onto the biomechanics courses. And it really is 50-50 between people that feel like the business has been completely obliterated um, and people who have just suddenly found a new way. Um, so I think at the, at the moment, it's really difficult for people. And as I said, I'm one of those people that, um, you know, quite, it felt quite heavy on um, having not got a, a current client base. It wasn't like I could just suddenly pick up a client base um, in the middle of the pandemic, but, um, Honestly, I think for the future, it's there's not going to be any difference when everything can open back up and, and spring back to life. Ultimately, a personal trainer is there for knowledge, but generally people 
know roughly what to do, mainly for motivation and accountability. And I don't think those things are ever going to disappear. We're always going to need accountability and motivation. And I think that it's a bit like you're in a class, you're teaching your participants, you've got those red, amber, green, you've got those green people, they will tuck, jump, burpee, whether you have told them to tuck, jump, burpee or not. <laughs> and you will have those, and they come to the front and they are there every class and it doesn't matter what's happened in the day, they are getting into class. And then you've got your amber people who, you know, if there's a, if there's a priority that's greater than working out, they're going to go and do that um you might need a little bit more tlc to to accomplish something in the class but ultimately they're there they're sort of 50 50 and then you've got your red people terrified potentially or intimidated or insecure or don't have the knowledge or don't or used to and feel like they've let it slip and it's a real big 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 effort if there's something that they can um do instead they'll do it and it and it's hard and that's not an indictment on them as a person because their strengths will be somewhere else. <laughs> um, and their strengths are probably where our strengths are lacking. And um, I think that you'll always have that kind of class system of people. And so actually lockdown, yeah, we might lose a few to the, to the, the greens that can go off and download the whatever app and jump around in their front room, that's totally fine. They might suddenly realize that they're saving gas and they're saving time and not needing to go to the gym, but you are still always, always gonna have the other categories of people that want to be in a gym environment or want that community or need a personal trainer. And maybe more of them will actually come out of the woodwork in this, in this season. So I think there's always enough clients to go around. I always say that to my students. I think Don't worry. Yeah. always enough to go around whether you lose some and gain some that you just need to find them and and I think we'll, we'll come out the woodwork so I think as soon as soon as things can open up and spring back and as I said in that in that lifting of the lockdown between the two um most people I've spoken to said that their clients just rushed back in they were good to go so I think we're going to be inundated uh, yeah. eventually I think I think the industry is going to be filtered out to the ones who are in it because they actually feel they have a purpose to help uh, and it's going to weedle out the ones who who aren't uh, sadly it's probably going to weedle out the few who are not as entrepreneurial uh, and they, they see it they care too much rather than thinking strategically mm -hmm. um, so we'll lose some of those guys but I think it's going to open up a huge demand because of the health mental health physical health yeah, and I think the fact that their ability to do any low grade, you know, low grade activity, even even just low grade activity has has reduced so much. I think we might find more people holding their hands up and just saying, I need help after this. <laughs> <laughs> I see your Instagram. That would be ridiculous. <laughs> okay, so okay. Uh, thank you for that. Well, another thing I'd like to ask you, and um obviously you've done the biomechanics coach diploma. So what do you think are, just getting back to the industry in general, sort of like with or without the COVID pandemic, what are common misconceptions about biomechanics in the industry, do you think? I think that it's the same misconception that I had when I just done my level three and thought I knew it all, is that um, we, every, um, a couple of things, everybody is the same and we can kind of treat everyone, apply the same exercise regime or to get results over everybody and everyone's body sort of functions roughly the same. Um, kind of a one size fits all. I can have my client doing smashy, smashy stuff if that's the quickest route to success with them. Um, I think that as a personal trainer, you want to see results and you want your clients to see results quickly and because it's good for business and it's good for your reputation and that you want them to come back and you want to do more of what you love doing um but maybe somebody might not be ready for that right at the beginning and setting their expectations as a client and saying this is a longer journey than 
maybe you think, but I'm here to walk it with you and, and sort of lay that out right at the beginning and not say, yeah, you can lose this much weight per week or you can be pain free, but, you know, be really, really realistic. Um, and then you don't have to go full throttle and get them injured quite quickly. Um, so the biomechanics diploma really opened my eyes to that because I realized the importance of having to screen somebody and understand them as an individual and then plan everything else that you do, whether that is personal training or even massage or um, any kind of corrective interventions to their specific biomechanical makeup and to understand that actually not everybody response the same to, to everything that you give them. Um, so I think understanding your level of the comp competence, like the limits of your competence at the beginning. And then the other thing about biomechanics is um, correcting everything from the outside. So that was where I kept hitting a roadblock with training people was um, this person's niggle is not going away we've tried everything that I can see visually from the outside to correct and it looks amazing. And so and I still don't know what's, what's wrong. Um, so yeah, that would be the other thing. And I think a lot of corrective exercise education is based around the extrinsic. So what, what can I see? How can I move that knee out? How can I level the shoulders? How can I um, level the hips when actually um, for that individual, there could be some, it's just, you could be looking at the most amazing compensation <laughs> to, for it to look perfect yeah yeah uh, so it's like it's almost like um when we're trained with everything should be aligned and level and straight and it yeah it kind of does but you need to know why it's not aligned and straight rather than just try and straighten it which is I yeah. think where where the industry is kind of at the moment that's that's the thinking isn't it as you say everyone should be level and straight and knees in line and back up and everything else and yet we're all so different like like you're saying when you understand the biomechanics of each individual we're all quite different yes we all need hip flexion but somebody's hip flexion may differ to somebody else's based on their hip geometry so yeah okay so um and what do you think i suppose that encompasses my next question was going to be about um common mistakes that pts make with regards to posture but i guess that answers it doesn't it really um but if you go back to you doing the biomechanics coach diploma how has it helped you as a trainer and a coach? And are you able to give any examples, obviously without revealing anything, about how it's helped you help clients? Yeah, I would say I use it more with, um, so this is my, welcome to my clinic. This is actually in my house. I'm very, 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 very fortunate to have this very um, lovely little room in my house so I can work from home which gives me a lot more flexibility and that's why in this season especially I'm doing a lot more of the clinical like sports therapy movement therapy side of things um, and not going out and about obviously I've got the little one so he can be home with daddy daycare um, and I find it invaluable with this side because um, it's a map as a route you, you know you can route plan with people where exactly we need to go they might come in saying please rub this 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 and this but when you actually start to I'm like okay uh-huh mm -hmm. maybe sort of write it down but actually just not really worry too much about that and then just measure what we can actually actually find in terms of this dysfunction and then I'll present it to them and say well look this is what we've discovered and then sort of plan it together do you either you've got some symptoms so we need to obviously address those in the short term but wouldn't you have a look at root cause um and I think a lot of the time when they've been to see people um not trash talking any clinicians at all um but sometimes they just don't have the time you know NHS physios if somebody's got a shoulder issue they're going to be going to the shoulder they don't have the time to spend on that or maybe their clinical um education that just didn't cover more of a, like a holistic approach every time and so they've they've come with no hope for anything to change because they've been told by so many people so many different professionals oh you, you know you're always going to have that and so we can sort of forget about the symptoms and stop chasing that around the body and just say well let's let's look at what dysfunction we can find and if we address that let's then see what happens to your actual symptoms and if if it changes then Brilliant. Um, so an example of that would be um, 
a guy who his wife actually I think bullied him into coming to see me um he had been through the mill seen everybody chiropractors osteopaths physios years and years and years scans everything there's nothing wrong with your back there's nothing wrong with your back nothing wrong with your back which is the worst thing to hear sometimes it's it's better to have a clear-cut definition of what's going on um and in the end somebody had recommended I'll go and see Fiona um his measure of of his physical state was how many rounds of golf he could get round and how many days he had to spend in bed afterwards and how many painkillers he had to take because golf was his passion and he was desperate to do it but unfortunately it just left him him bedridden um every single time so the weekends were like (laughs) the week and he couldn't could barely go to work um so we just started assessing his hips and his spine and addressing the dysfunction there with the the release work and um lots of spine mobility stuff to the point where he'd be in a board meeting uh, and he'd be like excuse me guys i've just got to stand up you just uh, you just carry on and he'd be like wall dipping against the wall <laughs> I know and uh, yeah you just uh, you just carry on talking and he'll be just in the corner like poor sign um and and it was amazing we like week to week he would just be like I got around an extra few rounds of golf or I didn't have to be in bed or I didn't take any painkillers on Sunday afternoon or and it was just absolutely amazing now his 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 issue his underlying issue I mean I have no idea what it was. No one knew, none of the scans knew, nothing. It had been 20 years of of like pretty severe back pain. It had just been signed off by everybody. Um, And whether it like fully disappeared or not, it didn't really matter to him. It's, he he just, we found a way to manage it and he was comfortable enough to do something that he really, really loved um, and had all the tools to take away and, do in his own time so if it started to creep back or he knew he needed to start doing his release work or he knew he needed to get off his chair a bit more um and actually actually I think I got a message from him a few years later saying like I'm still doing them <laughs> I'm still doing them <laughs> make all my phone calls standing up <laughs> that, 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 that kind of encompasses what Bumming and its coaching is doesn't it is you work with them for a period of time. It's a client-centered approach. You evaluate their whole movement, sort of the, their experience of previous practitioners and collectively you put all that information together and you think, well, the clinicians haven't found or something, it's, maybe it's biomechanical, but then you've equipped him with a management system. Yeah. And he then goes away and he remembers you. And you it's that empowerment of the client to be able to manage their own uh, their own biomechanics their own body which is I find so rewarding it sounds like you do as well I want your business but actually I'll be much happier if you didn't need me anymore and that's the place that we want to get you to wanting to come and see me but not really needing to <laughs> but referring all your golf mates <laughs> oh yeah <laughs> <laughs> uh, it was interesting you say uh, about because I was I've been listening to Stuart McGill I've been kind of like immersed in some of his lectures uh, over the last week. McGill. and uh, he argues there is no such thing as non, um, non-specific low back pain which is a uh, description used by the government in guidelines for our training and our education that if you have a level four low back pain qualification your remit is non-specific low back pain um, and obviously working closely with Mike, osteopath, Martin, who's a physio, um, and they argue uh, exactly as Stuart McGill does. There's always a cause, there's always a reason, whether it's biomechanical or clinical, um, and this kind of idea that there is a non-specific almost gives clients that impression that it's in their head, it's, they're imagining it. So to get sort of the service you gave to the golfer where you're listening, you're looking at him holistically. It's not like, oh, it's in your head. There's, there's, there's no cause, I can't find a cause. I think, you know, when you really boil it down, what you've done is is showing, yeah, there is a cause. We don't know what it was, but <laughs> we've met you feel better now. And, and it doesn't matter in some ways. Does that make sense? If it's clinical, generally they'll find out. I think if it's biomechanical, it's harder. Do you think that? Yeah, it's, it's, um... it's harder to prove because it just, disappears over time. The clinicians are there to rule things 
out and yeah. and we and, and whatever's left at the end of that <laughs> we can go a little bit deeper what the thing I love the most about having the biomechanics uh, the intrinsic biomechanics is is to be able to breathe new hope yeah. into a situation that felt so just like a brick wall you know being, you've been told by people that are supposedly the professionals that there is nothing we can do now so you're just going to need to go manage it and it's it's amazing to just go that might be the case and we respect that and I love that they've ruled out all of these things that could be terrifying <laughs> you know conditions and I'm glad that you now know more about what's going on in that joint but there there may be more that we can do and um you know if, if a shoulder is sat on top of dysfunctional hips then there is definitely more that can be done for that shoulder and uh, that they haven't had before so yeah I like just the, the the new hope lifting people out of that um dire there's nothing that can be done that's, maybe, maybe. Yeah, it's, that's like a big market of uh, client base that I hear from biomechanics coaches who say they almost attract a lot of the people who've, who, who've lost hope or been told by the medical world, nothing wrong with it, it's all in your head, you're imagining mm -hmm. it, uh, go home, take some painkillers, rest it, you know, and then we, I like the term, breathe life back into hope and uh, help them realise, actually, you know, I'm going to do everything I can to help you, if it's your biomechanics, then it, it'll dissipate. If it isn't, then, you know, yeah. we'll do what we can to help. And we ruled out another set of things that it isn't. And also you now feel better because your biomechanics are better. <laughs> so That's anything awesome. else that you had going on is better. <laughs> but even that empowerment, I mean, I like, you know, to empower a client is so valuable, so important because we do, in the past, I don't anymore, but we, we have given ourselves over to the medics because you're like, well, I'm, I'm not clinically trained. You tell me what to do. When actually it's our bodies and I think um, you know the idea that the best person to get rid of pain is the individual so as long as they get access to education from practitioners like biomechanics coaches on how to move and then manage I think that's a that's a huge sort of tool and a, a benefit that I hear quite a bit from biomechanics coaches. I've got to be honest though just when you were saying about people going for a massage I was conscious of this when I was going for when we were allowed out of the lockdown last time and I went for a massage, just a kind of a, an oily massage, you know, nice music and candles and everything. And I was actually going in my head thinking I really wanted her to myself that bit and that bit. And I was thinking that that's not right. You should let the practitioner, you know, do the massage. <laughs> it depends if you're a practitioner yourself. <laughs> Well, I know, but I was in my head, I was thinking, oh, I really wanted to just get a thumb in my traps, you know, and, and I was conscious that, I think it's a human instinct, isn't it? When something hurts, you, you, you want to put your hand on it, you rub it, you fall over, you hurt your knee, you, you bend down and rub it, you, you get a paper cut and you kind of, it's that weird instinct, isn't it? <laughs> I, so, I made a smart move and when I did that, I went to a biomechanics coach. <laughs> 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 I went to my nearest ally and uh, got ahead of Stephanie and then... Who was you, so who was your biomechanics? I went to, I went to Becky Eagling. Oh, right. okay. Well, actually, yeah, she, she popped over and uh, assessed me. I'm like, help. <laughs> You're in good hands. Yeah. So, okay. Um, so with lockdown, so people seem to be reading a lot of books. Do you have a an all-time favourite book recommendation anything any subject just the book that you always think of when somebody says what's your favorite book so it doesn't even have to be biomechanics related <laughs> okay okay one that's not biomechanics related and one that is interesting. okay okay well as as i said i mentioned being uncomfortably pregnant over lockdown i always was waking up between 5 and 7 a.m many mornings for a snack and a couldn't get back to sleep so I did dig out my um Kelly Starrett supple leopard book it's it's pretty hefty <laughs> uh I dipped in and out of that so that was a good reminder um looked up a few of the new uh looked up a few new METs in the John Gibbons book just as a bit of again just a bit of a refresher um well obviously I read baby led uh breastfeeding baby led weaning mama natural p p diaper free baby um 
<laughs> TMI. Uh, no, I would say my all time when it comes to anything related to this is has to be Explain Pain by David Butler and Laura Mosley. Um, in terms of being able to articulate to your client um, things about their, their rehab, oh, it's just, it's just so valuable yeah. reassuring people about their tissue thresholds how your brain creates pain and warning signals and how that doesn't necessarily indicate damage. Yes, it can do, but you can manipulate that to help people push through into their rehab um, and not be terrified of something hurting it. I'll quite, you'll probably get it the same, like your friends when they get the tweak the back or whatever, and they're going, what shall I do? What shall I do? You know, you know, and I'm like, move yeah. <laughs> in pain free ranges. Here's a video, here's a load of like releasings. If you can do these without, you know, six out of 10 or above pain, move, do not stop, move like this, do that, you know, and um, and then I'll direct them to that book and just help them to um, understand like how your body creates those signals and how you can use those to, um, yeah, to, I don't wanna say like override, cause obviously we do need to be careful but to understand if someone has a 20 year old injury, is, the, is it pain that they're really feeling right now or is it protection? And why is the body still protecting them? And what can we do to retrain your brain so that, that you're not on overdrive? And quite often when I'm working on someone, I'll say, um, you know, well, I'm gonna talk to the muscles or sometimes pec minor, I'm like, pec minor, we really appreciate you. Thank you so much. We're working so hard you've done a good job but you can stand down now like we, you don't you don't need to work as hard as you're working right now you know <laughs> sort of, um understanding how that your body can create those sort of protective mechanisms which feel like pain and feel like an injury but aren't necessarily they're just it's just your body trying to be smart so yes explain pain david butler laura mosley get hold of it make all your clients read it um yes yeah I agree totally and I suppose what what you're talking about is chronic pain rather than acute or subacute isn't it it's that kind of uh chronic end of the scale where there's no pathology anymore like you said an old injury it's more something that's just it's there in the background and it's like um David Butler calls it the sensitive nervous system he wrote another book uh called the sensitive nervous system and the idea that chronic pain is often um a sensitized system so it's oversensitized, and so, like you said, it's not indicative of actual damage anymore. Um, yeah. So that kind and of a lot of clients will use the P word, the pain word. When you really, when I, after reading the book, it made me ask them more detailed questions about what what does that actually mean to you? Like what what talk to me more about this pain and its pattern and how bad it really is. And you know, it hurts all the time. Is it hurting now? No. Okay. And sort of like exploring that with them so it's really it's a yeah, good sometimes time. pain in their world is tight and stiff have you had that as well where i've said so yeah is it actually hurt well no no it's a bit stiff so is it pain then okay uh, no no it's just stiff and tight That's right okay because there's a difference between pain and being stiff and i think you're right i think what we need to be able to do or have the skills and the training to do is is question that bit further because the client's comprehension of their own physicality uh can have a they, it just hurts like it just hurts it's tight and it's stiff and it hurts but is it actually pain yeah pain is like a, as a more of a warning signal aching could just be adaptive tissue you know uh, it could be both i suppose but very nicely put okay so um we, we've just got about five more minutes. So how about you tell anybody watching or listening to this, um, what made you sign up for the diploma? And what was your kind of favorite thing? Like anybody who's thinking about doing it, what would you say to them? What would you, why did you sign up? What was your favorite thing? And what would you say to somebody? When I was working as a tutor, um, I had it come around on one of those round robin emails, anybody interested in a, in a taster, um, so myself and one of the other tutors that I, colleagues, we came on a two day taster, Kelly Langmaid, um, we came on a taster together. My mind was like, there's so much I don't know. There's so much I don't know. Oh my goodness. I went and found my 
own nearest biomechanics coach because I just needed to, I was like, I need to see somebody. Um, so after he had taken me through the process um, myself and I was the client, I was like, yeah, I've got to do the full diploma. So booked onto that and um, got it done and done. Yeah, brilliant. Um, what was it? Why did I sound like, yeah. What was your favorite thing? <laughs> and what, sorry? What was your favorite thing about the course? Um, oh my. The, just the doors flinging wide open to all the people that I've ever had to go. <laughs> I don't know, go and see someone. <laughs> um, and, and I think it, like when we were learning, I was almost like picturing clients or picturing people like, oh, maybe that's what that person, oh, maybe that's what that person. Um, but yeah, just in terms of like the, the teachers being absolutely phenomenal and um, never making you feel like a question is a silly question um, and just the chance to just explore. The classroom is just such an unintimidating um, environment where you can, yeah, um hash things out and go off on tangents but like helpful tangents where you can explore people's situation i mean we had a girl in the group that had um hip replacements that was amazing to have um the chance to explore that and we had someone with, with scoliosis and we had someone with crohn's disease and we had all these different people and so we were able to go well what about for this person what about for this person what about for this person so even us as a group of students there's so much diversity in our own needs that we were learning how to handle um well what if this comes up and what if this comes up too and that's that's the bit i'm missing like we like um you and i are obviously talking to learners all the time about the online content which is fantastic whilst in lockdown people are like so in the frame of mind of learning and education but um you know one of the big reasons that we don't want to certify anybody online is because of exactly what you've just said yeah the experience in the classroom when you've got eight ten sixteen other learners and you're moving their hips and you're trying to assess their pelvis you're like okay every pelvis is different this feels different to yours this feels different to yours so those yeah, my, my, squat, my squat is like this I have a funny shaped hip socket on one side so this is like my perfect foot position for a squat I mean but you know you get the chance to explore that <laughs> and and find out like yeah yeah it's, it's like learn the piano without a piano no it's just impossible you've got to be there face to face with people touching people getting feedback and get having the the tutors go here's like adjustment to that or oh you need to do it like this or you'll get better success if you try this so yeah well it's like I think you know if you go back to personal trainer education where you learn it and everybody's feet go here in the squat and you're upright and your knees are in line and then you 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 teach 100 people to squat and you're like hang on a minute oh, there's something more in this and it's exactly <laughs> the same isn't it with the biomechanics model this is how you assess the pelvis but this might happen or this might happen or this might you know and there's so many variations so the testing is very simple but then when you put it on different bodies that's where it's i find it really exciting frustrating and exciting but i think that's where the classroom kicks in doesn't it really is yeah it? so uh okay so last question then just before we sort of cut off is so anybody who's watching this so i imagine um youtube or listening to it on the podcast people who might be thinking about doing the biomechanics coach diploma or working with us, or maybe they're talking to you or myself about the biomechanics education academy and all the courses what i guess you've alluded to results and benefits throughout but kind of in a nutshell what might you say to somebody uh who's thinking about joining the academy um with being from an empathic sort of position, what would you say to them knowing how you felt before you invested? What might you say to someone? It will open new doors to thing, to new areas of business. So it will benefit financially, but it will also make you kick ass at what you already do and <laughs> give you more confidence at what you already do. Um, it fits into so many different roles it fits into your role if you're if you work in clinic it fits into your role if you're out and about 
personal training it fits into your role if you work in a gym with a sports team with people that barely move with older adults with children if you can use it in so many different roles as a group x instructor as a pilates instructor one-to-one in groups like it fits it's not like it's not like it's going to pigeonhole you into one role it, it benefits all of them or you could just be a biomechanics coach and nothing else it that's fine but it it will it will work with so many uh, it will merge maybe even um so many of your positions um that it's a really smart move and we also have a hundred pound a month payment plans on everything <laughs> So you don't even have to panic about the money. And I know that that is difficult for many people right now. Um, You know, remember when I call you that I'm in the same canoe, in the same (laughs) boat. Um, I understand. But that just is nothing when it comes to what your return will be. If you think you can charge half of that, maybe for an appointment, you've seen two people and you've paid your monthly for it. So it's, it just... Yeah, I think it's a really good time to, a smart time to do it. It was when you said uh, it'll, it'll help you kick ass and I was thinking, help you kick ass without tearing your hamstring. Because <laughs> you know that I move freely. Is your hamstring or your sciatic nerve? <laughs> <laughs> Let's find out. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's brilliant. Fiona, thank you ever so much. Um, I love uh, being involved with you, talking to you. Um, and so on and so uh, what we'll do is we'll, we'll close off now I know you've got little one um, in the background though so yeah I've just switched my monitor off because he's just started crying so I'm going to go <laughs> perfect timing <laughs> so anybody listening or watching um, you can get in touch through www.bobbyhenniseducation.com we want to get to know you and we want to hear your story we want to hear where you're at and we want to explore with you how this fits with what you currently do and how it can make you um more money and more give you more um enjoyment in your job like we want to hear your stories so call us and talk to us come and join the community yes fiona jones biomechanics coach thank you so much take care